Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Monday. Start of the work week is upon us here. November 4th, 2024 is the date. 1016 AM California time here. Uh, 1.6, the latest earthquake up there across the Alaska area. Uh, looking at the last 24 hours of earthquake activity here on the globe. Shows a little bit of movement for their escalation out here across the West Coast, Southern California, southward here into the Baja California region where uh, a little bit of activity is ramping up here today, including a 2.8 earthquake right outside the uh, Brego Springs area. Now that is uh, just west of the San Andreas Fault here, the plate boundary. Uh, prior to that, a little bit of earthquake activity as well, a little bit further up north along the same fault system with a 3.1 uh, strike in the area about three o'clock this morning. So things are on the uptick here. It looks like specifically across this area of Southern California. We'll watch for some further uh, advancement here across the area throughout the day today. But I uh, got those two earthquakes there showing a little bit of a seismic increase. Uh, also this morning off the uh, coast of Northern California, right on the Cascadia subduction zone. Goodness, uh, 3.2 couple hours ago here about nine miles deep here into the area and of course this region been uh, showing a little bit of elevated activity here in the last week or so it uh, looks like they added a couple earthquakes up here uh, into the area from yesterday into the Cascadia subduction zone sometimes in the, on the weekends here holidays uh, they don't post these little quakes that may have happened uh, until a business day which is today Monday so it uh, looks like there was a little bit of smaller earthquake activity here across this area of the Cascadia. And then today we got one a little bit further south there, right on the plate boundary itself there of the Cascadia mega thrust area for a 3.2. So things are uh, starting to pick up out here across Southern California and Northern California. We'll continue to keep an eye on things here today. Uh, one little earthquake there outside the San Francisco Zoo from 8 o'clock this morning as well, 2.4. So be safe out there. We'll definitely uh, watch things here. Uh, also, looks like underneath the Lake Almanor area, this is from yesterday, though, a little 2.5 stirring up out there in Northern California. As uh, far as anything major going on here across the Pacific Northwest, relatively quiet. Same for the uh, Intermountain West regions here. Not uh, seeing anything specific out here in terms of elevated seismic activity. Let me double check the Yellowstone overview here and see what's going on um some wind events out there again I, I can see that stirring up out here across denny creek madison river west boundary mary lake as well all picking up what looks like some type of wind events and uh just for verifications verification purposes here we'll double check make sure that's wind out there as a lot of times these seismograph stations are exposed to the elements and uh, it does look like it's a little windy out there. I don't know about any storms or any snow. Not a whole lot going on out there, but uh, we do have some wind gusts out there across the area. Uh, that uh, looks like it's stirring up on the seismograph stations there. But uh, let's go back and double check, see if we're missing any earthquake activity and that noise. Really not seeing a whole lot of seismic activity out there across the area for now in Yellowstone. It's the quiet spot. Uh, Texas area, still getting some movement out in the oil fields. One more earthquake out in the New Madrid seismic zone, a 1.8 from late last night. A newer quake here across the Vanuatu region. So for the last 24 hours here, largest earthquake activity uh, is going to be this 4.9 here across the Philippines just after midnight my time. So nothing big, not even... Uh, at least according to the USGS here, not one earthquake above 5.0 for now. 4.9 uh, across the area of Iceland to the southwest along that plate boundary. Um, movement, you know, definitely notable here across the Baja California area northward. There's a couple quakes here. The USGS is not showing like this movement here in the Gulf of California. It's pretty important because what goes on here can ultimately affect areas upstream so that would make it consistent here um, with the activity we're seeing in southern california movement down here gulf of california and um, 
all the way up north here along that plate boundary, even further up north off the coast here of the um, Canada region. It looks like some threes stirring up there, upper threes. Let's go ahead and check out the uh, Earthquakes Canada model here real quick. Still trying to uh, better myself here in terms of uh, being under the weather. It's just one of those things. It's, it's continuing right now. So there is the, uh, let's see, that's not going to be it. This is going to be probably, it's got to be these quakes up here that are fairly recent. Those look like they're from uh, the 31st. Okay, so it looks like it's at the northern end here of the back out here well north of the Cascadia along the Pacific and the North American plate boundary where we have a, a little swarming of earthquake activity out there very notable there on the earthquake 3d globe so this entire area here on the move today Northern California Southern California up here off the coast of Canada Baja California area Gulf of California watch this area because that's uh very obvious here on the map on the globe today that things are starting to move out here across the west coast so we'll keep that uh keep that in mind here uh new zealand let's see what we got going on down there really nothing since uh last night's 4.3 well 4.3 or 4.9 i think uh, is what the geonet servers were reporting some deeper activity here across the uh, vanuatu region and you got the typical clustering going on here across the Philippines into the Java Trench and the Indonesia Islands area. That's just a place of super dynamic crunching going on between the plates here. If you look at all the general arrows pointing towards this area, reinforced by the Eurasia plate, the Australia plate, the Pacific plate. This is a collision zone, because collision zone, so to speak, here. In terms of plate dynamics, a lot of twisting, a lot of pulling, a lot of subducting, a lot of volcanoes, a lot of rift boundaries, all sorts of stuff going on here across this area. And that's it's where all the arrows are pointing, and it makes sense there to see daily earthquake activity there across the region. That's why they're getting always way so much, way more earthquake activity across that area than, for example, the West Coast. We obviously can build up strain out here throughout the years to get... Uh, some big earthquakes, but we don't have the arrows pointing here together. Now, if these arrows were pointing opposite here in this direction, um, the Pacific and North American plate, then we'd be seeing a lot more earthquake activity, but it's not. Um, as the Pacific plate moves, we get uh, some adjustment and strain. When it stops over here and halts, so to speak, we get the buildup between the Pacific and the North American plate here. That includes the West Coast. See the arrows kind of pointing in this general fashion but also the Pacific plate moving off to the Northwest. So we don't get these big earthquake uh, events all the time. It takes a little while to build up some steam out here for earthquake activity across the West Coast. Um, some movement out in the Puerto Rico area, looks like. A little 2.8. One up here across the Puerto Rico Trench as well, a little 3.5 from yesterday. Nothing major going on across the Atlantic. I was expecting a little bit of further movement here across the uh, South Sandwich Trench following this activity from yesterday, but uh, it, has n it hasn't happened. Interesting, though. So, I mean, a lot of times when we see activity out here, we'll see some adjustment here across this little subduction zone called the South Sandwich Trench. Aside from that, folks, um, we'll keep an eye on things here. Got some big dates coming up. Big date for election day tomorrow. Get out and vote. Definitely vote, folks. Um, space weather activity. See what we have here. Uh, X-Flare remains a decent threat out here. 35% chance for the X-Flare probability. And uh, that's definitely well called for because we have a, a sunspot group over here that's coming around the eastern limb showing quite a bit of dynamic activity. Although, well... This region here is still showing a little bit of complexity. Um, it was popping up different deep dark colors here 
uh, in the last 24 hours or so. Today, roughly about the same. But overall, this whole region right here, very capable of producing some stronger flares. Not really too concerned with this one. That's got a clear-cut separated core. Um, this one really is not even all that noteworthy either. Uh, and this one's starting to decay, it looks like. So our main area of focus is going to be back here in this regional sunspot group as we enter uh, deeper into this week. These uh, should start to pop off some flares here fairly soon. And again, 35% chance for X flare. M flare at 75, C flare around 99% chance. And there's that M flare activity uh, from earlier this morning. Late, well, late last night, early this morning. A little one, not a big one. M, uh, uh, looks like it was an M 5 point something. Although on there it shows an M 3.7. All right, uh, let's see what else we got here. No major roars in the forecast. We'll continue to watch this. Uh, severe weather, a big time severe weather event here today across the area of uh, the Southern Plains, getting, venturing over towards the Midwest. Decent chance for tornado activity here today, folks. Look at that. Something you would see uh, that's very typical in the springtime. Here it is, November. And we have a 10% hatched area of, of tornado activity. Uh, this is the area that the Storm Prediction Center fears, feels that uh, most of the ingredients will come together to produce strong tornadoes up to EF5. And that's going to be a 10% hatched area within uh, about 25 miles of a point for those strong tornadoes. So just a heads up. Also, you know, in pretty much anywhere, if you're out there in that green zone as well, uh, watch for these uh, rotating thunderstorms and take the tornado warnings seriously. Even if there may not be an actual tornado on the ground, a lot of times the, storm, the uh, National Weather Service will put out a warning uh, due to indicated radar ro rotation with these thunderstorms that can produce tornadoes. So, uh, Wind and some hail threats out there as well for your Monday I was pulling up the uh, the model run here, and this is what it could look like here later on as we go about the afternoon time period across Oklahoma, northern Texas, uh, Missouri, extreme southeastern Kansas, venturing into Arkansas as well. These, this could be what the radar looks a little bit later on um, this afternoon and into the evening, folks. So you got this low pressure system here pulling up deep moisture there from the south. And uh, it's just going to fire up these storms here, and uh, it's going to be a, a, a kind of a big deal there. Definitely want to be on guard. Uh, let's see here what we got. We got one tornado warning out there right now. Southeast of Oklahoma City, uh, this is that line that I showed you guys just starting to get going. It is now 1230 out there, so we're getting the daytime heating. Two tornado warnings there in this line of activity. Numerous severe thunderstorm warnings out there as well. This is just outside of Seminole, Oklahoma. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and this will continue to uh, potentially produce tornadoes out here, folks. Uh, there is a tornado watch in this entire uh, rectangle-type area out here. So that includes, it looks like, uh, even, even down into Dallas, a tornado watch, meaning that conditions are favorable for tornado tornado activity out here today folks so just be on guard uh, for the day tomorrow uh, let's see what we got here let me go back to storm prediction center and see what's up tomorrow a little bit less right look at the, all that sh severe weather shifts to the east great lakes area i've seen a little bit of marginal risk but really nothing major going on there uh two percent chance for tornado and a little bit of wind potential out there as well. Uh, looking at the numerical model, GFS model here shows that line of severe weather. Uh, potential tropical system down there across the Florida area. Let's put this into motion and show you guys. Uh, Going to be bringing some rain out there and intermixing with a low pressure system here as we uh, come towards next weekend here, this coming weekend. Uh, that's going to bring another severe weather round across the same areas that are dealing with it right now. It may even enhance uh, the area with this extra tropical moisture in the air 
Uh, so we're going to have to watch that. Bring a lot of rainfall out there for sure. West Coast, a little bit of snow and rain coming in there to California, Oregon, Washington. And um, yeah, it just it looks like a typical La Nina pattern out here. Definitely watch that. A lot of severe weather potential coming up here in the next couple weeks across uh, the center, center portion of the country. All right, um, I'm going to jump out of here, folks. All the seismograph stations out there look pretty quiet. We'll keep an eye here on the West Coast. Remember, activity active here from about, oh, just off the uh, Queen Charlotte Sound area right about here. All the way down Northern California, down even to Southern California, starting to see some adjustment this morning and, and right now. So we'll, we'll definitely keep an eye on things. Have a good day, folks. We'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later on. Enjoy your Monday.